Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Then this PDB structures they have one more term. So, I will show you here. So, if we have the exhausted coordinates, this occupancy, right? Then then we have another one term here, right? This is called a temperature factor. Right? Also, we can call this as the B factor. This will tell you the flexibility of each atom. How to get this one? So, if you are able to fix the atom within the electron density map, if you fix the atom within that space, right, they are rigid, and in this case, they do not disturb these electrons. So, in this, they have an ideal situation. In this case, you can get the dense distribution, right, within that particular conformation, then they are very rigid. But usually, the electrons have wide distribution, right, because of, right, then they vibrate because the vibration of these atoms they have the different molecules in the crystal lattice. In this case you can see the electron density they will include all the average of the motions if they vibrate more then you can see the deviation is very high. If you can occupy the same residue or same atom within that rigid position then this is very small if you not then they fluctuate very much in this case you can see the variation of these fluctuations there that is what they give in terms of temperature factor. Okay, we see this this case right you can see the history 93 okay, you can see this contour can accommodate this particular residue and some case the contour is not able to accommodate the full residue because it is vibrating more inside this map. So, you can get this information right and account these motions in the PDB structures right this is what they give you the data B factor or the temperature factor. Essentially, if the number is less than 10 or less than 20, then we can say that the vibration is less and they are rigid, right, and then they have the particular position in the structure. If it is more than 50, then the atom is moving here and there, and the fluctuations are more. In this case, the temperature factor or the B factor is high in this case. So, this is an example. So, here you can see the histidine 93, N D 1, and the C D 2 the value is around 12 or 15 or 16 and you can see these atoms they are rigid. And the same case if you see the histidine 81 right N D 1 and C D 2 right here you can see the values are more than 50 say 72 or 73 and in this case you can see that these atoms they are highly flexible and these are the B factors are very high. So, here I show the picture in this case you can see different colors for example, which is the blue color or uh, some of them are in yellow and the red. So, the blue color ones right they are uh, having low values right low values means what is the meaning of low values? They are rigid not low flexible they are rigid. So, some cases if it is yellow or it is in the red in this case they have a lot of motions right and in this case they are highly flexible. So, if you see this data right for example, I show the structure right here. So, which is they are highly flexible because the values are very high in this case because this is from the DNA and this is from the protein side. And some cases if you see here and many cases are these right. So, here there are less then this case these atoms are rigid. So, now we get the 3D coordinates right now I will explain about the various options available in the protein data bank. So, first we have the sequence when we get the sequence information right you can see the amino acid sequence here right earlier I showed the FASTA format you can see the PDB here as well as you can see the second structure assignment. What is the meaning of this uh, spiral ones? Helix. This is helix and this is strand right. This is based on the DSSP. What is DSSP? Dictionary of second structures of protein. So, they take the uh, PDB structures and based on the hydrogen binding pattern it will assign the secondary structures right. So, here given the amino acid sequence you can see the helix, strands and so on. So, different secondary structures. So, now go to these different annotations the proteins are classified in different groups I will explain the details maybe in the next class right. In some cases which are dominated by helical re regions 
in this case you can see the proteins as helix proteins and some cases you can see the protein is dominated by beta strands. These proteins we call as beta proteins and some proteins we have both alpha helices and beta strands they are called alpha beta proteins or alpha plus beta proteins or mixture proteins. So, there are some databases which have this information right if you see the annotations you will get the information regarding that right I will explain more detail in the next classes. So, you can see the sequence similarity right the PDB recently revised the page. So, for each uh, similarity for example, 100 percent or 90 percent or 50 percent they developed several clusters right we discussed about the clustering method right which clustering method we discussed Eight. right CD so, which clustering method K means clustering right. So, use the different clusters they keep all the sequences together and they put the similar sequence in one cluster. So, they can make different clusters depending upon any thresholds right. So, they have clustered various clusters right with, with respect to the identity and you can see from these clusters they, they get the non redundant sequences they have the sequence similarity you can get for each uh, proteins right in the PDB. Then you go with the 3D similarity what is 3D similarity the similar in the structures. So, now we discussed about the sequence similarity in this case we have sequence aligned the sequence 1 with this sequence 2 and see why they are similar. In the case of 3D similarity they take one protein structure and they superimpose this protein with the other protein structures right we will discuss the details later and see how far they are different depending upon a C alpha position or all atoms right they define based on the term R m s d that is root mean square deviation. So, here we have the coordinates x 1 y 1 z 1 and x 2 y 2 z 2 they can get the distance when the assigned to superimpose the structures there are several atoms right or several C alpha atoms for each case we calculate the distance and finally, they get the root mean square deviation right this will tell you how far these two structures are similar. If the structure is similar then the RMSD is less or high low right if it is less you can see the structures are similar if it is very high then you see that they are not similar fine. So, you can have the values right so, these are the structures right which you can have the similar structures right. So, in this case they are they align with the another chain on x x 7 and to give this root mean square deviation right this is 0 0.47 or 1.29 right they are very close to each other right. Then you go to the literature literature will give you the information on the papers which have been published. So, based on different techniques or different stability or different information right in the literature. For example, for this structure to lysozyme li 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 right there are various papers published on this aspect. So, they listed up the primary citations for that particular paper. So, then if you see they also linked with the other papers which used the PDB structures. For example, there are several other methods right. So, for example, this fold rate and getting critical residues and the effect of proline mutations on stability right. So, there are various methods these papers they use the PDB structures for developing model right. So, there are several papers they use the structural information right for the analysis they listed up all the papers in the site. So, if you click on this one right. So, then if you see these are the structures which are used in the paper they also give the data about the structures they used in a particular paper right. So, this will give you the PDV is important PDV structures are important and the PDV structures are widely used for the analysis as well as for developing prediction methods. So, you get the biology and chemistry. So, you can give the structural keywords right as well as the description of the proteins the weight and, and the source method and so on right and you can get the information regarding the geo times like the cellular location molecular function or biological process and you can feed these uh, enzymes and you can get the catalytic site residues right. So, what is catalytic site residues? Residues which perform catalysis. Catalysis right this is a shorter small segments right. So, you can see for example, which is the database you get the catalytic site residues C atlas. catalytic site atlas right you can see a CSA right you will get this information you can see these are the residues right which are uh, important and acting as the catalytic side residues. So, then the excited diffraction they will give the crystal data for example, if you have the any crystals they have the length a b c and the space groups right and they give all this information as well as the number of hetero atoms solvent atoms and refinement and then here you can give the bond length right there are various types of atoms like between c and n and c and o c and c beta right. So, different types of this bond length they give the average and the standard deviation. For example, if you have a C and N 
what is the bond length for the C and N? So, that is 1.33 right because C and N right. So, you can see 1.33 and the standard deviation we give this is a minimum 1.27 this is 1.38 right this is the minimum and this is the maximum fine. So, you get the bond angle how many atoms are required to get the bond angle? 3. 3 right. So, you can put C and C alpha right if it is C and N and C alpha right. So, you can see this is the average there are 149 angles 129.87 is the average. So, the deviation is also not much right 114 to 133. So, this is a minimum value this is a maximum value and you can see the average as well as the deviation. Then you get the torsion angle. So, we discussed uh, earlier about torsion angle. So, you can see the four uh, different atoms right. So, the uh, uh, phi say angles right you can hear the average values the minimum and the maximum values are here and you can see the average value for the different dihedral angles. Then we go with this the methods the and the and the geometry right as well as they give the links with the structural summary structural features ligand features and so on. So, you can get all the information right. So, when you go to the pdb right rcsp dot org right then you can get all the information regarding a protein. So, just you try with any of the pdb id right and you can read this see the details which are available in protein data bank. Right, so, the classifications and then uh, biological details and other information regarding the pathways and uh, motions and so on. So, the PDB has several options to search and to get the data. First, you can use the simple search. In this case, you can search with the any, pro, any PDB ID or you can the names or any keywords. So, you can use any of this information in the simple search and you will get the information. And they have the advanced search. In this case, you can search with various other options. You can check with the ID and keywords or the structure or any type of annotation or the molecular type, sequence features, chemical compounds and methods. For example, if you want to get the data for all protein DNA complexes right, you are interested in the protein DNA complexes right. So, in this case which uh, keywords you have to search, which option you have to search for the to get the protein DNA complexes this is a molecular type because there are several molecular types and I showed at the beginning there are many proteins and several nucleic acids as well as some protein nucleic acid complexes. If you want to have the protein protein complex you can select the proteins and see whether you need the monomer or the dimer or the trimer and so on right. If you are interested in protein DNA complexes right you go to the molecular type so you can get the ok next box will open. So, it, yeah, we have the questions. So, it, first the question is whether it contains protein, right? Yes or no? Yes, because we need protein DNA complexes. So, this is yes, and it contains DNA. You need? Yes, right? So, you put yes. Then it contains RNA. No, right? Because here we, we do not need this RNA because we are interested in protein DNA complexes. Then, whether it need to contain protein DNA and RNA hybrid? There is a bit no need because we are mainly interested in protein DNA complexes. So, if you want to have the protein DNA complexes, you search for the proteins and the DNA. So, if you do this, right, you can get the data. In this case, you have also another option whether do you need to remove the sequences with some redundancy. If you want to remove, you can also remove the redundancy, you can cut, say, set some cutoff identity. If you do not want just you do not have to remove, if you want to remove you have to put this and then give there are several options you can click which redundancy do you want. Here about 40 percent identity, so now we get the data. So, here also they classify different groups, you can see the organisms you can get the homo sapiens 538 and equal to 48. So, you can make the classifications and you can analyze separately if you if you are interested. Then you have the taxonomy different methods and resolution. If you want high resolution structures you take this right we will get the good number of structures. Then you are interested in latest data. So, you can have the data which are very latest. So, in this case you get this this month they are two structures the person database for the protein nucleic acid DNA complex right polymer type is protein DNA. Then we have different enzyme classification. So, these are the different classifications and different types of proteins right this I will discuss later about the scope classification. So, if you want to have a group of proteins you can get the group with the different aspects you can with the different organisms, different uh, taxonomy, different methods, a different enzyme classification and so on. 
if you want to have a rate on protein protein complexes then what to do you can get the two proteins but you need to have the complex means at least we require two so in this case you can select the number of uh, chains right minimum two if you want to have the different proteins not the homo 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 uh, dimer or homo polymer if you want the heterodimers or heteropolymers then if you have to mention the chain length should be different then you can get the heterodimers or heteropolymers right so likewise you can get the information and collect the data from the protein data bank so now if you have these complexes and we can get lot of information from the proteins right and you can also use this uh, structures to obtain various parameters right and you can also visualize the protein right the protein structures i shown a static structure right this is a right, this is a kind of static structure so you can see only one motion right this is only one view so you can view this protein and you can view in different directions and also you can observe various information from this particular uh, uh, proteins right so there are soft several software available to visualize the proteins and to get the information from these protein structures the commonly available software for visualizing proteins right the pymol and rasmol jmol okay king and webmol they are uh, developed earlier days and swiss pdb viewer so rasmol is one of the oldest ones right just to view this uh, protein structures and to uh, and to understand how they make the contacts and what are the interactions and all these things right currently jmol swiss pdb viewer and pymol are widely used software to visualize protein structures and among all these things pymol is getting famous because can get the publication quality figures and also there are several options available in pymol right i can you can fruitfully utilize the pymol for updating several several information for a protein structure i'll show you a short demonstration right about the utilities available in the pymol earlier days when they can started the pymol it was free for everyone right then after some time when it is getting famous because many users they started to use this pymol software then the schrodinger got this pymol and they incorporate inside the schrodinger software so they became commercial right however they are kind enough to give this for free for educational purposes for the most of the utilities so if you want to get this pymol for the educational use first you need to register and you have to get the software right by giving the necessary information right to the developers so you give the necessary information then they will give you the key right and then you can uh, register right and you can install the software right in your uh, uh, desktop so here this is the web website where you can get the pymol login fine so once you get this pymol right and then you start to use it so when you install and when you launch pymol you can get two windows right so you can see this is one window this is with the command prompt you can use any command right in this space and execute the program then you can see the next one the down so here this is the viewer window so here you can see the your uh, molecule and you can do some manipulations in this uh, protein molecule right so first we need a structure so it accepts the pdb and also several other formats for the pdb just if you go to the file and uh, you take the option open then it will ask you the file which you want to open so then you go to this your uh, directory so if one tm.pdb uh, this is the one if you choose right when you open it right then you can see this structure here right you can easily see the structures so default is lines so you can see several lines here so this here it represents the pdb id one tim right this is the pdb id which you can see in this picture right so when you see the right side then you can see this five letters a s h l and c a is for the action this will tell you what you want to do and s is for to show right whether you want to show the atoms or show the structures or, or not and h is to hide so if you don't want to see then you can hide and l is to label and c is to color right and a is for the action right i will tell you a few examples to how they we use this so first you want to show this as a cartoon so we use this s right you can see this is the s here so you want to show this as a cartoon currently it is lines if you want to show in cartoon right then you go to s and show as cartoon if you do like this then you can get the figure like this right? it is a kind of cartoon if you see this one 
it is very difficult to see where are the helix and strands. Can we see this where you can see the helix and strand? We cannot see that right, it is very difficult. If you see here, then here you can see where the helix are located and where the strands are located. Now, you can see the spirals here that represent the helix and you can see the arrows that you can see this is these are strands. Then also you can color by chains, if you see this one, how many chains in this structure? We do not know right, maybe 1, maybe 2 right. If you color by chain right, automatically will color right, now you can see how many chains? easily you can see right. So, you can use this information color information you can see now there are two chains this is one and this is two right in the in this chain. So, now you can also hide for say two chains here if you want to hide one chain. So, you right click on the chain right and you can get this information the for example, chain information and if you go to this hide right the chain and hide. So, and click on everything right and you can see one chain is hide here so, two chains. So, we select one chain this chain we selected and if you hide that chain. So, now that chain is hide then we can see one chain. It is also possible to zoom in and zoom out and also you can change the orientations also change the locations. You can move this mouse and you can change it to the different orientations right and you can have different views as well as you can zoom in or the zoom out this particular structure. So, okay. so now if you want to see the different secondary structures in a different colors. For example, if you want to see the helix strand and the loop. So, different color options here we use red as helix and yellow as the strand and the green as loop right. In this case you can see this is the case red is helix right you can see helix here and you can see the strand in this yellow one and the loop right in this green one. You can clearly see the difference between all these secondary structures. So, now if you want to display a sequence now we are dealing with the, the structure if you want to show the sequence and see where are the helices in this case you go to the display option right you have the display option here and here there is option called the sequence right. If you show the sequence then you can see the sequence also if you see this region corresponds to helix here and this region corresponds to strand and this region corresponds to loop right you can see the same color they apply to the sequence and the structure. So, you can map and see where you are the helical segments strands as well as the loops in the sequence as well as in the structure. So, you can also see change the color in terms of the chains right if you are to this very long if you drag through then you can see one uh, sequence in one color right and another sequence in another color. So, now if you want to see a few segments any segments or if you want to measure any bond length or bond angle or torsion angle. So, you have selected the segment 21 to 26 right it is very simple just to click on this sequence then that is represented in the structure you can see the same in the structure the pink dots these are the residues which represent the same in the sequence for example, L G E L I H. So, now you can see and you can zoom in to select the residues you can see the pink ones these are the selected residues and you can uh, hide all others. So, if you see this specific residues in the ball and sticks right, what is ball and stick model? The bond. Yeah, six represent the bonds and the balls represent the atoms. So, if you see here there are different colors right they follow a specific color for any specific atoms for example, the green as uh, carbon and n for this nitrogen is blue right and the oxygen is in red right okay, this is oxygen right this is the nitrogen and you can see this is a carbon right you can see this. Now, you can label the residues right. So, here this is here we need we have the residues glue 23 is here 23 leucine 24 and uh, isoleucine 25. So, this is the one we selected. So, these residues are given here. So, if we say glutam 23 it is marked here. So, you can also now the, the, the selected leucine 24 and you can also mark with this atom name here we labeled this is C alpha and we have C beta C gamma this is the main chain right and here this side chain okay, it is marked here these are the main chain atoms and what are the main chain atoms N C A C O right. So, main chain atoms given this one right the backbone atoms and here these are the side chain atoms right this is a leucine. So, it has a side chain C beta C gamma C delta 1 C delta 2 right this is uh, uh, shown here. Then you can also see in this uh, line for line options and so on. It is also possible to measure the bond length, bond angle and torsion angle. So, in this case go to the wizard right and then go to the measurement right it will ask uh, for the atoms to measure the distance 
angles, diagonals as well as the contacts. How many atoms are required to get the distance? Two. Two, right? So, if you want to get the distance, it will ask the atoms. Select the first atom, right? Click on the first atom. So, if you click on the first atom, right? Say this one, right? And ask for the second atom. So, they click on second atom. So, now it is C D 1 and the C D C G, right? So, what is the distance? It is 1.5 angstrom. So, you can see the display is in this in angstrom, right? So, angstrom, angstrom is equal to 1 to 10 power minus 10 meter, right? 10 power minus 8 centimeter, right? So, you can see this is the angle, this is distance 1.5 angstrom between C G and the C D 1. Now, if you have this angle, how many atoms are required? 3, right? So, we have to select 3 atoms to get the angle. So, you can see that C D 1, right? 1, 2, 3, right. If you CD1, CG, and CD2, if you give, uh, click 3 atoms, then this will give you the angle. So, the angle is 109.9 degrees. Likewise, you can use this pi mole for various aspects. You can see the mutations, you can see the molecular surface, and you can see the interactions, you can see the contacts, right. For example, hydrophobic interactions, electrostatic interactions. So, you can play around a lot with this pi mole. I will show one more example. For example, to see the B factors. Right, we discuss B factor. What is the B factor? Is temperature factor. This will give you the fluctuations of each residues, right? For example, how much they are fluctu fluctuated and how far they are rigid. So, if you see this one, if I take this file, so I take one AQ1, right? They open this file in this line lines, right? So this is you can see on surface, right? This is the line one, and you can see the surface, and from this you can see the B factors, the different colors. You can see the blue colors. This is rigid. Right, that is less flexible, and you can see the orange ones here and there, right here. So, you can they are highly flexible. So, we see many residues are rigid because they could accommodate the residues within the electron density map. So, in this case, several residues are rigid, and some cases they are fluctuating. These residues are uh, highly flexible, right? They have uh, more B factors. So, then if you have the pi mole, it has several applications. For example, you can see the comparing two structures whether they are similar or not, you can mutate any specific residue and see what is the changes because of these substitutions and you can get the high resonance structures and also you can get uh, measure the bond angle, bond length and torsion angles. You can under analyze various types of interactions right. You can manipulate or you can play around this uh, pi mole to get various informations. You can also get very high resolution figures right. This is acceptable in publications right and another important fact is it supports python script for uh, the user uh, the necessity of this users right. You can find the interface residues, pairwise distance and so on. For more information you can uh, look into the tutorials right. You can see the websites right and you can get more information right and you can use this pi mole right as an effective resource right in your project or in your uh, reports or your papers or anything or any applications. So, to summarize today's talk. So, what did we mainly focused on? Protein, protein 3D structures. 3D structures provides which information? Atomic low information, exercise coordinates, right. So, what are the various experimental techniques used to determine 3D structures? XRD and XRD. XRD and mass spectroscopy. These are the widely used methods, right. Lepton is also now used for the uh, determining structures, right. So, what is the resource? What is the, the, the database which contains protein 3D structures? PDB, right, protein data bank, right. So, this is organized by the different institutions, right, different places. Now, we have the worldwide PDB, right, fine. So, which information, what are the other information which can get the PDB? For example, if we take the coordinate file, the coordinate file gives the information on the atom number, atom name, residue number, residue name, and the chain information, and the coordinates, occupancy, and the temperature factor. What is the occupancy? Right, the orientations with the atom can take how many different orientations. If it is one orientation, this will be one. Different orientations, the total sum will be one. Then temperature factor, right? So then we discussed about the visualization tools, right? And we gave a demo on one tool, which which one we discussed? Pi mole. What are the application of pi mole? You can get the structures. You can view the structures. You can see the various orientations. And you can map sequence and structures and the mutations and get different types of interactions and you can measure the mole length bond angle right and you have a lot of applications right for by using pi mole. So, we discussed more about 3D structures and the coordinates. Now, the question is we have a lot of data right PDB contains 133,000 structures right. 
So, what can we do with these structures? What are the various information you can get? In the subsequent classes, I will discuss about the parameters or the properties, right, which we can derive, right, from the known 3D structures and how these parameters can be utilized for understanding the structure or understanding the function of these proteins as well as their complexes and so on. Thank you for your attention.